Hello, I'm Lamento Alexeyenko from Budapest University of Technology and Economics. I'm going to talk about the congestion mitigation method, which was inspired by a protocol of the internet. In my talk, at first, I will speak about an everyday problem, specifically about road congestion in sensitive zones, for example, in residential areas. As we will see, it is not only the problem of road transportation, but it is also a problem in the Internet. And the Internet already has an efficient solution for mitigating the congestion. After that, I will show how we can integrate this method into Zumo. And finally, we can discuss how this method influences the urban road traffic. Because of the increasing number of vehicles and the emergence of modern navigational apps, Commuting traffic appeared in many sensitive zones in our cities, including residential areas and neighborhoods of schools and hospitals. Unfortunately, the huge amount of cars passing through or even getting congested in these zones has a negative effect on both the life quality and the safety of the lo local residents. Of course, speed bumps, speed limitations or barriers can be installed here but it is quite annoying for the residents too. So, the main problem is that there are sensitive zones which shall be protected from a higher traffic flow. If we look for similar problems in other engineering disciplines, we can find some solutions. For example, torrents are controlled by dams in the hills, or another example is to keep the internet backbone infrastructure up and running. Congestion has to be dealt with, for this reason, many congestion reducing method has been already defined for the internet. One of them is the explicit congestion notification method, or its shorter name is ECN, which in fact is also applicable in the road traffic domain as an algorithm for intelligent traffic lights. At a low traffic density, ECN based intelligent traffic lights or shorter, the ECN judges, behave like traditional traffic light controllers. When a congestion is forming, specific neighboring intersections are informed about this fact and they can reduce their throughput towards the congested intersection. When the congestion is solved at the first intersection, it also sends a notification to its neighbors, therefore the traditional behavior can be re resumed. How can we sense if there is a congestion? It is a very good question, and in our solution we took a really naive approach. We measured the traffic flow, the traffic density, and also their relationship at each leg of each intersection. We say that there is a congestion if and only if the traffic density at a leg gets higher than the 90% of the traffic density, which corresponds to the maximum traffic flow. Since intersections can have arbitrary shapes with many legs and even more connections between the legs, which can be congested or of which neighbor can be congested as well, storing a traffic light program might be impossible because of its size in the memory. Therefore, signal phases has to be generated on the fly and the signal plan has to be fair and safe too. To achieve these goals, we describe this as a non-negative valued integral programming problem. For a simple three-legged intersection, it can be written as follows. Every x variable represents the state of traffic light for a direction between two legs of the intersection. So, x1 equals to 1 if and only if there is a green light from the upper left to the upper right direction x2 equals 1 if and only if there is a green light from upper left to the bottom direction. Every other x variables will be equal to 0. Then we have three types of constraints. The first type describes which directions cannot have green lights at the same time. For example, direction 1 and direction 3 cannot have green lights simultaneously this kind of condition ensures safety. The second type of the constraints are to explicitly stop directions 
for sum xn equals to zero, which enforces the above mentioned ECM behavior. The third type of the constraints are to explicitly give green lights for a direction for sum m xm equals to 1. And in our solution, m is rotating through the directions, thus uh, random mean scheduling is created, which is theoretically fair. Finally, our goal function is to maximize the number of green lights. The signal phase generation is repeated periodically. The T recalculation time depends on the number of vehicles in the directions which currently have green lights. The dependence can be seen on this slide. We integrated the described approach into Eclipseumo, extending our already existing intelligent simulator platform. This platform also supports platooning since we believe, in the future, intelligent traffic light control and intelligent traffic movements will also be essential. The implementation requires an IP solver tool, it is made by Google, as, and as we can see, the performance of our simulation platform is only slightly worse than the original Sumo performance. As a test scenario, we selected a major intersection of Budapest and its surrounding. On the southwestern side of this intersection, Hungarian motorways M1 and M7 terminates, therefore commuter traffic usually goes through the residential areas located to the east and the west side of this intersection. We placed ECN judges on three different but really close intersections and we connected them. We conducted measurements and reg registered the corresponding microscopic fundamental diagrams. As a baseline, we tested the traditional system as well, which is depicted as grey on this diagram. As it can be seen, measurements with ECN judges, orange and grey on this figure, completely lacks the drum branding side of the MFD. We know it is not caused by the round robin scheduling, since it behaves almost like the traditional system, see the black line, and we also know if we replace some simple round robin schedulers to ECN judges, the effect is the same. There are almost no difference between the green and the orange lines. Then the missing downgrading side is caused by the connected ECN judges located in the three intersections in the center of this area. Since the traffic demand was not reduced, reduced traffic density and thus reduced traffic flow implicates that travel times are also increased. This effect was proven by our simulation as well. Increased travel times often means congestions. In our particular case, it means the incoming highways are getting congested. This was also proven by the simulations. As Zumo can tell, departure delays are reduced compared to the traditional case. Per se, perhaps it is caused by the periodically sparse tra traffic but in the meantime, the departure positions also fluctuate. As we interpret this, it means sometimes there is a longer congestion and sometimes the traffic is more sparse. But you can be sure your travel time will be increased, thus you will wait for some time in the perimeter of the city in this particular case. As a conclusion, we proposed an ECM-based ITLS which runs in real time and of which fairness and safety is mathematically guaranteed. This method can maintain a less dense, lower volume traffic in a sheltered zone, but it also increases the average travel times. Since departure times are not increased, waiting at the perimeter of the ECN controlled zone is quite possible, therefore traffic jams can be relocated to a predefined perimeter of the city where they might cause less harm than in a city center or in residential areas. Our implementation has many points to improve, including the congestion sensing method and the green light scheduling method as well. Our signal phase recalculation times can also be optimized. If you have any questions, please write a comment or send me an email. Thank you for your attention.